Dear viewers, in 2011, the National Bank of Belgium became the national authority in charge of financial supervision of Belgian banks, stockbrokers, and insurance companies. And from that time on, the bank has pursued an expanded mandate, which is to preserve stability of the financial system, to protect depositors, insurance policyholders, but also to ensure that the financial sector plays the expected role in the economic ecosystem. Much has happened since then, as the world was slowly recovering from the great financial crisis. And in the following minutes, I mean, colleague from the NBB will take you through the, the main developments that have marked uh, prudential supervision and regulation over the past 10 years. And they will cover development in both the micro as well as macro prudential domain, but also with regard to the, the resolution framework. And that for banks, for insurance companies, as well as for payment institutions and financial market infrastructure. The financial crisis brought a whole new army of new acronyms signaling a complete overhaul of the EU prudential regulation and of the institutional framework for supervising the financial system, individual banks, insurance companies and investment firms. These reforms have contributed to a more harmonized implementation of prudential standards and the constitution of adequate capital and liquidity buffers. Besides, financial institutions have upgraded their organization in order to respond to new requirements in areas such as corporate governance, derivative trading, as well as the preparedness to recovery and resolution scenarios. Next to microprudential supervision, dealing with individual institutions and transactions, the National Bank of Belgium also exercised macroprudential powers in order to mitigate systemic financial risk. This impressive range of regulatory and institutional reforms have paved the way for a more stable and robust financial system. Over the last decades, microprudential supervision has evolved significantly, now also taking into account non-financial risks. Supervision relating to the prevention of money laundering and terrorist financing, for instance, has been greatly reinforced in order to efficiently tackle new trends, international money laundering schemes and the unlimited ingenuity of criminals. To this end, the National Bank has set up a specialized team while also increasing its resources in the domain. The ever-growing number of supervisory actions and measures has led to a greater awareness at the level of the financial institutions of the risks and potential reputational damage involved. Following a number of high-scale money laundering incidents in the European banking sector, greater regulatory harmonization and the creation of a European anti-money laundering authority are under debate. Besides this, the fitness and propriety of directors of financial institutions today form the subject of an in-depth supervisory screening. Also, sound internal governance arrangements have become key focus areas. One of the main lessons that we learned from the financial crisis of 2008 was that prudential supervision focusing on risks associated with each individual institution taken separately is not enough to preserve overall financial stability. The seemingly harmless behavior of an institution at individual level could actually put financial stability at risk if a whole group of institutions behave in the same way. Moreover, financial institutions are interconnected and this can rapidly provoke contagion phenomena. Concretely, in order to better address these risks of systemic nature, it was decided to improve the prudential framework, especially its system-wide or macro dimension. Thanks to these improvements, it is now possible to implement a series of macroprudential policies with the aim to mitigate these risks and preserve financial stability. Over the last years, the NBB, as macroprudential authority in Belgium, has made use of several of such instruments to ensure that the financial sector can absorb possible shocks without compromising its crucial role of financial intermediary. The banking union is based on three pillars. The single supervisory mechanism, 
the Single Resolution Mechanism and the European Deposit Guarantee Scheme. In the SSM, the first pillar, the national banking supervisors of the Euro area, including the National Bank of Belgium, supervise the banks together under the leadership of the ECB and this using the same set of rules and methodology. At the heart of this lies the SREP, a detailed and periodic review of the bank's business model, governance, capital and liquidity position. The SSM also sends out inspection teams to the banks for on-site audits and has specialized teams that test the mathematical models that banks use to calculate their capital requirements. While significant institutions are under the direct supervision of the SSM, smaller banks remain under direct national supervision. This does not prevent the SSM from maintaining a very close monitoring and assuming the ultimate responsibility for important decisions such as the granting or withdrawal of a banking license. The joint banking supervision will be fully deployed once the European Deposit Guarantee Scheme is fully up and running. Pending that, a prudential supervision of cross-border groups remain key. Only this way will we prevent the Belgian Deposit Guarantee Scheme from having to intervene. Also, the prudential supervision on the insurance sector was characterized by some important evolutions during the last 10 years, to some extent similar to the banking sector. But some particularities exist for insurance. The first difference is the absence of a formally harmonized supervision at the European level. But this does not mean that there is no international cooperation. At European level, AIOPA is an umbrella authority with gradually increasing policy making and intervention powers. Those powers contribute to an increased harmonization and level playing field of the supervision also enhanced by the supervisory colleges. But on a more global scale, the bank contributes to the work of the International Association of Insurance Supervisors. The IAIS plays a similar role than the Basel Committee for Banking and determines global standards for insurance supervision. As such, we could say that insurance supervisors have a larger autonomy at national level compared to EU banking supervisors. But this autonomy should be understood against the background of a growing set of harmonized international standards and regulation. The second difference is the content of the prudential regulation itself. The arrival of the prudential supervision at the NBB happened to coincide with the revision of the prudential framework for insurers. Long time announced and often delayed, the new prudential framework called Solvency II finally ended up being implemented in the course of 2016. This new risk-based framework is a holistic one, based on the principle of market valuation. It also brought new challenges, both for supervisors and undertakings. Solvency II promotes a principle-based supervision which allows for more room for interpretation. The proportionality principle on his side ensures that the application of the rules take due account of the size, nature and complexity of each undertaking. More generally, the rules are more numerous and complex than in the past. And the story is not over yet. Five years after its start, the Solvency II framework is currently under review by the EU legislators and important changes may be expected in the near future. As such, we can conclude, the regulatory framework, also for insurers, is an ever-evolving story. Despite the substantial strengthening of the prudential requirements, a bank may still fail. That is why in the aftermath of the great financial crisis, a new legal framework was adopted in Europe. It introduces new tools to handle failing banks, new authorities and the fund. In case of a bail-in, shareholders and some creditors will have to absorb losses and recapitalize their bank, while insured deposits will remain fully protected. Other instruments exist to transfer some activities of a failing bank to a sound counterparty. New authorities have been entrusted with the use of these tools. Being a resolution authority entails being proactive to ensure that banks are resolvable. In Belgium, the National Bank of Belgium has been designated as the National Resolution Authority. The Single Resolution Board coordinates the actions of the National Resolution Authorities and acts as a resolution authority of significant institutions. To protect taxpayers, it manages the Single Resolution Fund, which is fully 
pre-funded by our banks. This new framework thus contributes to the financial stability, to protect taxpayers' money and to protect depositors to the benefit of all European citizens. The world of the payment services industry in the last 10 years has become much more complicated and diverse. Non-bank institutions continue to increase their footprint in this industry. Through its supervision of the payment services industry, the National Bank has focused and continues to focus on ensuring three key elements. First, the IT security and IT risk management of both the companies, bank and non-bank, providing these services and their applications. Second, the adherence of these companies to good governance standards, including, for example, key provisions in relevant legislation designed to protect customer funds held with non-bank payment providers. And third, the front-end security of the commercial applications put in the market by players in this domain through, for example, the enforcement of rules related to strong customer authentication. Future evolutions of open banking, the increase of fintech companies active in our country, as well as applications available on our market, and a third payment services directive on the horizon are all sure to present new demands and new challenges to prudential supervision in this very interesting domain. Many things have happened in the financial and economic landscape over the last 10 years, and I'm certain many things will happen over the coming decade. Financial system, as a consequence of supervision, are in constant evolution, need to timely adapt to new challenges. So challenging times ahead for potential supervisors, for regulators, of course, but mainly for the financial sector industry. So let's know here what are the views of representatives of the banking and insurance sector. In the financial industry, trust is at the core of our business. A well-balanced prudential supervision is necessary to safeguard this core value today and in the future. To avoid the negative consequences of overregulation, inadequate regulation or red tape, prudential supervision should constantly challenge itself to find the right balance between the stability and the safety of the financial industry and the development of business and innovation by the incumbent financial institutions. The world around us is changing at a fast pace. The challenge for both financial institutions and prudential supervision will be its ability to adjust to the upcoming changes and challenges. A level playing field is a common denominator in the approach of prudential supervisors to deal with change of regulation. As a consequence of the global reach of the financial industry, local regulatory gold plating should be avoided. A thorough understanding of Belgian, European and global market and legislation are necessary conditions not to weaken the local incumbent financial players. Same goes for understanding and analyzing new business models and fintechs that arise and compete in our business domains. Since technology has become the most important facilitator of our business, a thorough understanding of technological evolution is key in order to be able to regulate in an efficient way. Financial institutions are embracing new technologies such as robotics, artificial intelligence and data analytics in their daily operational activities. Supervisors should do the same and recruit people who understand the technological side of the business. Last but not least, the financial sector plays a crucial role to help its clients make a smooth transition towards a sustainable future. The challenges we are facing in the sustainability area will require an efficient and enhanced cooperation between supervisors, financial institutions and the government. No one should get cornered. Only together we can make this transition a success. In brief, constructive cooperation and agile regulation are key ingredients to tackle the challenges I just mentioned. They will determine our common success in the future. As mentioned by the colleagues of the BNB, the prudential control of the insurance sector started at the BNB at the same time of the introduction of Solvency II at the European level. But on the contrary of banks, the supervision on the insurance sector is completely national, so the BNB is fully in charge of the supervision. And to me, this is really a good thing. Insurers need to be close to their customers on the local market. This to offer a good coverage at any time. And as insurers need to be close to their customers, the supervisor 
should be close to the insurers on that same local market. For an efficient and effective prudential control, the challenge for the future will be to be always ahead of new risks to come. And this more particularly in an environment that is more volatile and really uncertain. As you know, we are in a phase of revision of the Solvency II regime and we know it will not be the last revision, but there is more than that. There are a lot of new risks emerging or become more explicit. Of course, climate change, cyber risk, security as such, digitalization, inflation, institutional risk, and we almost forgot about the pandemic risk. All those new risks emerging need knowledge, vision, and a systemic approach to be addressed. And the real challenge will always be to stay ahead of those new risks.